Hey everybody, welcome back to Winning with SketchUp. Adam here with you again. And today I wanted to show you guys a little trick I came up with for creating um, contact shadows in SketchUp. And this is really useful in things like product rendering or car rendering um, when you wanted to composition in the background in Photoshop or in instances where you may have a spherical panorama mapped onto a piece of geometry, let's say a dome or a sphere that is um, surrounding your scene. So you'd get that really nice background, but it's going to occlude or block uh, SketchUp shadow and sun system. So we're gonna kind of fake a shadow here under the car, and I'll show you a, a little trick I came up with to do that. So first thing we were gonna do is download a plugin. Um, I'll grab this from the extension store, and this is from Renderiza, and this is SketchUp Channels, so it's S-U-C-H, and that's the SketchUp Channel plugin. So you want to go ahead and grab that. Um, and we're going to need another plugin here from TIG, and this is going to be the SKM Tools. So you can go ahead and grab that as well and install both of those and follow along. So I have a model here that we're going to create a shadow for, and this is a... Um, model I got from the 3D warehouse, just a vehicle, uh, Maserati, and let's say we wanted to create kind of um, a shadow here underneath the car. So there are a couple plugins that will try to create the shadow on faces. Um, you know, there's a couple different plugins that have attempted to do this, but I think the method here that I've come up with is a little better overall. So. What we're going to do is we're going to call the first button here on the SketchUp channel plugin. And what this does is just create styles which fake um, render channels. And so they look kind of like render channels and it's just faking them and you can use them in post processing and things like that. So we're just going to focus on the shadow channel and get rid of all the rest of these, turn these off. And before we go ahead and create this, we want to make sure we're in the view, um, in the top view. So I'll go to the camera top view, and that looks good. And now I'm just going to go ahead and hit create. So what that'll do is change our style. We can see here it's created this, what they call shadow style. And it'll create one of these um, style tabs for any one of these we choose, and it'll also create a scene tab. And the idea with this plugin and what it does, it just automates the process of building styles which represent these and then um, these different render channels and then creates a scene tab. And then the second part of the plugin is just a bulk scene tab exporter. So it's a pretty simple concept overall. But here we go, we have our um, vehicle with the shadow and I'm. I'm going to go ahead now, I can close this, and I'll open up the second tab, which is the bulk scene exporter. And just a little tip, you can use this actually to do bulk scene exporting that have, have nothing to do with creating sh um, channels. So if you just created a bunch of your own SketchUp scenes, um, there's a little bonus here. This is a um, pretty handy scene exporter as well. So what we want to do here is we're just going to go to single scene. I'm going to set this to PNG so we can utilize this transparent toggle. And then I'll leave the default um, 800 by 600. Um, we could turn this up or down depending on what we're doing. Um, more resolution would actually work better in creating a smoother shadow. but. Um, I'm going to show you a little trick on how to smooth the shadow out afterwards anyway, but if you're finding that you have really jagged shadows, try a higher resolution here. So I'll just go ahead and hit export and hit OK here because the style is already loaded. And then it's go ahead, it went ahead and exported that for me. And off screen here on my second monitor, it opened up. Um, opened up the file here with the image um, that it exported. So what I'm going to do is just drag that image over here into my scene. And that'll come in as an image. You can see here in the entity info. And 
stay in the top view and I'm going to go to x-ray mode turn off shadows here make things quicker and then I'll just line this up and put it in the center here and scale that something like that it doesn't have to be perfect and turn off x-ray mode and now I'm going to go back to um, you want to make sure you're back in textured mode when you do the rest of this if you stay in this hidden line mode um, for some reason it doesn't work properly so make sure you're in textured mode and we can see we have our shadow but it's not ideal because we have the image of the car there as well so we're going to use another plugin here and that was SKM tools and if we download and install that, that'll put an option in our tool menu um, called Image Trimmer. So we make sure we have the image selected. We go to Image Trimmer. And now that kind of duplicated things, it just trimmed off the excess um, in our image. I'm going to say no. We don't want it to stand up. Um, flatten the PNG texture of components material so it will see shadows. I'm just going to say no here um, and that'll just keep the the texture on there. It doesn't really matter. So delete the original image. I'm going to say yes and delete the temporary image trimmer files. Say yes and then the factor is this is going to trace around this um, image. Now it just yeah, the, depending on the factor we use the more um, or less jagged this is going to be and you really want to kind of um, use this factor in combination with the resolution that you exported so the higher the resolution this um, the longer it'll take but the the less of a factor you need um, here in, in solving this so I'm just gonna say okay and let it do it at the default and that'll go through and that's done already now if we get in here, we should have just a face by itself. Um, I'll bring back and unhide the edges. And we can see we just have the outline here. And we can see it is a little bit jagged. Um, there's a couple ways you can solve this. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to delete the center for now. Um, you can leave that in here, but it'll just make it easier to see. And there's a little piece hanging out over here. Um, and I'm just going to connect that and delete that little piece. So we can get rid of some of this jaggedness. Um, there's an option called Image Trimmer Simplifier, which will help on really complex things, but. Um, I like to use some alternative methods here. So um, if we select everything here, I'm going to use edge tools. And just make sure there's no edge gaps. And then I'm going to use simplify curves. And set this to maybe one inch or so. And you can see that went through and simplified that. And um, toggle that undo and redo you can see the difference there it smoothed it out a good bit um, it's one option and the way that I would probably do this is to use vertex tools and I'm going to select everything call vertex tools and then I could go to merge close vertices and just leave this at two inches and that did a a little bit better job there so we can see the difference and just kind of smooth things out overall um, you might be able to even use the BZ convert tool or something like that to um, convert it to smooth edges there so um, you could also use Kirby Zard but I from my test it um, didn't really do a good job of, of simplifying so we have that now just get in here and we want to build a face on this and now we're just going to texture that so we're going to go into materials go into our colors and go down and maybe grab 
uh, one of these last two blacks here. And just make sure we color our face there. And we can go back in top view, x-ray, and just line that up again. Something like that. And we can get in here and rehide these edges as well. Maybe make it a little bit smaller that way. And the cool thing now is we can grab this material as well. And lower the opacity. So we want to bring that opacity down to maybe 50% or so. And now this will really come in handy if we would have a spherical background. So as a bonus, I'm going to show you guys how to quickly add a nice background to your car renders. So to save some time, um, hopefully you guys all know how to create a sphere with two opposing circles and follow me. But I'm just going to use a plug-in um, 3D Shapes from JWM. I'm going to go down to Sphere. I've already got it set up to the size I want. I'm going to use a 300 diameter, 150 foot radius um, with 36 segments. So I'll say OK. And kind of snap that there. And it should be sitting right in the center in the origin point. And I'm going to get in here and add a material that I have already imported. And just find that. Let's use this one and let's just apply that there. And we want this uh, material on the inside, so I'm going to reverse these faces. And I'm going to make this here, get out of this group here. Um, in x ray mode, I can drag select our vehicle and then I'm going to zoom into that turn off x-ray mode and we can see what the material looks like here in our sphere so I'm going to double click on it I want to go to front view and what I'm what I need to do is I'm going to go um, zoom extents and with the sphere selected here, I'm going to run a plugin um, Sketch UV and make sure you're in the front view parallel to the origin line or the axis here, the center equator. And we'll launch Sketch UV, right click, go to spherical map. And it doesn't look like anything happened because it happened on the inside of the sphere. One thing to know with Sketch UV, it doesn't work if your faces are, or your faces are, are um, oriented backwards. So you won't, it only work on the front faces. So I'm going to hit camera previous and that'll take me back inside the sphere and we can see now that we're back inside we have our 360 degree panorama. You can look all the way up to the sky all the way down to the ground and just like that. Now I'm going to um, close this and bring back our car model. And let's grab our contact shadow material and just darken that a little bit. And I want to rotate our background image so that um, the sun is over here. And what I'm going to do is grab the sphere, which is in a, comp a group or component, and I'm going to use uh, the Move It 2.1 plugin, which will allow me to rotate along the Z. And I can rotate um, just by a few clicks here. 
So we could also use the rotate tool and make sure that we are on the blue axis here by dragging, left clicking and dragging up. And now we should be able to rotate um, this way as well, which might be a little faster. So we just want to make sure our sun here is on the opposite side of our shadow. And I'm going to make the shadow black, all the way black. It looks a little better. And then adjust the opacity. So there we go. We have our shadow all the way around. And it's actually um, physical geometry, so it will render as well if we went ahead and rendered this out. So I hope that was helpful. Um, you guys learned how to, a little trick for creating contact shadows. Uh, another thing that we could do that I didn't mention would be to just take this, um, instead of going through the process of trimming this, if we wanted to just use um, this image and bring this in, hide this um, background but if we just had this image and let me delete that it came in bring this in flat um, and we had this material here we wanted to explode this first regroup it now we can sample the material and we can see it here we could also bring this over into Photoshop really quick um, double click on the layer do a color overlay set that to black say OK, save this back out as a PNG, and overwrite the temp file, say OK, and then over in SketchUp, you can see we do have that black shadow as well. So it's another way. Um, it's not created with geometry, but as an image, um, keeps the file size a little bit smaller, maybe running a little smoother. You don't have those extra edges and then you can adjust the opacity on the image as well. Um, and if you do use the image, you actually get a little bit of a sharper and finer look to your shadow there. So let's bring back the background. And there we go. Turn off hidden geometry. And we have our background image with our contact shadow. So hope that I hope that was helpful for you guys and we will see you in the next video. Hope everybody has a great day. Happy rendering.